Um, so like I was saying, your bank will produce this statement, and this is a statement of what's happening in the evolution of the amount of money you owe in a loan over time. So we're going to step through this. Um, if we borrowed the $150,000, right, that's at time t equal to zero. So think about our cash flow diagram, time t equal to zero, we get an up arrow of $150,000, okay? So um, $150,000 at time t equal to zero is equal to $150,000. There's no interest, that is an instant in time that, um, uh, that sort of locks in that P, sometimes it's called the principal. At the end of the first month, okay, so, so I want you to think about this for a second. You borrow $150,000, that's all you do at time t equal to zero. One month goes by. At the end of one month, interest has accumulated on that $150,000. And right at the instant that the in interest is accumulated, you also make a payment, right? You also make a payment, the one that we calculated as the A in the A given P compound interest factor. So that's our, that's our 1982-26. Okay, so our 1982-26 is the payment that we make. IP is the interest on the P, which sometimes people call it the principal of the loan. But if we, if we have $150,000 and we have a 0.833333% interest in one month, if you multiply 0.83333% by 150,000, you'll realize that in that month, $1,250 of interest has accumulated, okay? So, so here, here's what's happening. You borrow money, it, interest is being charged, and then you're also making payments. And what happens over the life of a loan or a mortgage is that when you make a payment near the beginning, you're mostly paying for interest. So what, it, what we're saying is the 1982-26, that payment that you make, 1250 of the 1982 is just paying interest. The difference between 1982 and 1250 is 732, and 732 is the amount that actually goes towards paying down the 150,000 that you borrowed, okay? So at the end of the first month, we can say, you still owe 149,267.74. You made a payment of 1982, interest of 1250 was charged, so you really only paid down 732. If you want to make a spreadsheet, okay, this is what I would encourage people to do to understand it. It's easy to program this, right? The 1982 is really just what you calculated from the time value of money um, from the A given P factor, right? From part one of this problem. This column in the spreadsheet is just a formula that is the monthly interest rate times whatever the outstanding amount was in the period previous. And you can see how we step through. So, so at the end of this first cycle, this first month, 149,267 is outstanding. We then charge interest here on the 149,267. So you can see the interest is a little bit lower because the amount that at the beginning of that period was lower. We always pay a constant amount, right? So the amount of money in this of our second payment that goes towards paying down the outstanding amount of the loan is a little bit more. And then each month, the amount of our payment that goes towards paying down the amount that's owed gets larger and larger and larger. And then in here, we kind of skip. So, so, so there's really kind of a discontinuity here. So really there's, there should be sort of a line that goes across here, right? Where this is, this is sort of a, a, a break in time. We're gonna skip a whole bunch of rows we're gonna skip all the way to the end of this mortgage at month 120. So at month 120, by the time we get down here, we're only, we're only at uh, you know, 1966 owing, we pay our 1982 interest of $16.38 is charged. So the difference between those two is what we end up paying down, which leaves us 
a balance at the end of only 22 cents. And the 22 cents is basically the summation of all the rounding errors that went into the time value of money calculations. So for a lot of people who are asking, um, a lot of people who are asking questions, basic questions about time value of money, right? The reason I didn't stop and answer at some of those other questions is because if you're listening to this explanation, which if you didn't get it, you could watch it again, it's recorded. Hopefully you can understand that as we move through time, interest is happening, right? So interest is, is interest makes dollar amounts larger when we go forward in time, and it makes dollar amounts smaller when we come back in time. And remember, I called that a discounted cash flow. And when we bring dollar amounts from the future back to the present, we call that a discounted cash flow. And it's not because it's some kind of a deal, right? And discount. It, it's it's called discounting in the world of finance because the dollar amounts are getting smaller because we move them backwards in time. Okay. So, so someone, I mean, someone in the chat has had sort of an aha moment. So yes, the F given a formula accounts for all of this. Like, so all of this stuff is built into these formulas. That's why the formulas look so complicated. If you're very interested in things like the A given P formula or F given P formula, the derivation of those formulas is in the textbook. It's a little bit, um, it's, it's a bit boring for us to do actually in class, but if that is what is needed to help you understand where those formulas come from, then by all means, uh, have a look at those derivations uh, in the textbook. I believe they're in the appendix of chapter three. They will do the derivations of some of the uh, time value of money equations, okay? Um, there was a, there's a big danger in some of this, um, and it relates to COVID. And, and I, I don't know if you're if you're if you're still hanging in there. Um, I wanted to relate specifically this table to something that happened um, because of you know all the difficulties people were having with their finances. People were people were um, you know out of work. They couldn't make their mortgage payments, and the banks. Remember in the news, the banks said, oh, you can skip your mortgage payments. And everyone thought, oh, this is great. I can skip my mortgage payment. Yeah, deferring mortgage payments, okay. Not the best idea. Of course, if you can't afford to pay your mortgage, you can't afford to pay your mortgage. And I think probably the mortgage deferral uh, was a good program for a lot of people. Uh, however, what wasn't covered all that well in the news initially was the fact that the banks continue to charge interest on the mortgages. And it kind of made me angry because I thought, well, how you have all of these people that are out of work, they have no money, they can't pay their mortgage. And the bank says, oh, okay, no problem. You, you don't have to make payments for six months on your mortgage. And everyone sort of said, yeah, that's great. I don't have to make payments. But in the background, the, the bank was charging interest. 